All right, hello and welcome back to my basement. This is Jeremiah Wolf, and i uh, just thrown this together real quick. Uh, someone posted on Reddit, and I said, hey, uh, I can answer that question. So, um, but I, it's, uh, it's late for me. It's like 8 p.m. That's bedtime for me. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to just, I'm just going to make this video. I'm not even going to make a thumbnail. I'm just going to throw it up. I'll clean it up later, maybe, maybe not. Um, answer this guy's question about CCIE exam. So let's take a look at it. Uh, there we go. All right, so FunFan9641 asks, uh, I want to be very prepared for when I walk into the lab. Uh, what is the equipment like? I want no surprises or random things that throw me off. Can someone describe the check-in process? What kind of chair you sit down in? Do you have a lot of desk space? How many monitors do you have? What type of keyboard and mouse Cisco provides? What type of resources are available for you to use when you start the test, i.e. documentation available? What does the proctor do? Are they sitting super close while you work? What is the lunch break like? How long do you get between phases? What are some stress management tips to get you through the exam, especially during parts where it's frustrating? Okay, so this is a lot. We'll move on to the next parts. Uh, so first off, full disclosure, I took the exam. Today is uh, Friday, June 23rd. I took the exam, that's not what I want. I took the exam uh, this Tuesday, the 20th. So three days ago, I took the exam and I failed. I failed the, with the exam. It was my first attempt and... Um, there it is, June 20th, 2023, Richardson Enterprise Infrastructure fail. Now, I don't feel too bad about that specifically, and I'm going to talk, I'm going to make some other videos over the next week or so going into detail about my preparation, what I've been doing, and why I'm not too worried about failing, why it's also a huge problem, um, and we'll talk all about that in some upcoming videos. But know that I took it on Tuesday and I failed. It was my very first attempt. And I had every expectation of failing. And so FunFan9641, that's my tip number one. You're going to fail. There are some people, 5%, maybe it's 10%, that pass on their first attempt. It's super rare to pass on your first attempt. Most people take two or three attempts. I have talked to guys who are on their sixth attempt. Okay? So that's the first thing. This is, it's a process, it's a journey, and a big part of that process is going to take it and failing. And the reason why is it's so different from anything you've ever done before, which we're going to talk about here in just a second, that you have to see it. I, I'm going to tell you everything I can right now, but I promise you, you have to see it. You have to sit for it. And it's, it's the only way to prepare. Now, I will say this. Because of my YouTube channel, I have a lot of, I've talked to a lot of CCIEs, a lot of CCIEs and CCIE candidates who have contacted me privately, who I've talked to on various forums. I got to tell you, I have scoured the internet for forums, for blogs, for uh, chat groups, everything I could find CCIE so that I could just scrape any little bit of knowledge from. And I have gotten to talk to a lot of guys because of that. Presumably they're guys. And this is what I can tell you. I, I really almost hesitate to say this, but this is the reality. I do not endorse this. I do not recommend this. But from what I have talked to, the guys that pass on the first attempt, they're a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of them are geniuses. Like, I'm the first to admit I am not a genius. I am a very smart guy. I am way above average in terms of intelligence. That is not me, you know, whatever. That's reality. Uh, I wasn't, no, I, I wasn't going to pass this on the first go. So the guys that pass it on the first go, some of them, a tiny percentage of them are, ge are just, they're just that smart. But most of the guys that pass on the first go, they're using dumps. 
That's just it. They're using dumps. And again, it's the same thing. When you, when you see these guys who have four, five, six, seven CCIEs, hmm, it, it's hard to imagine that they're, especially if they're normal. Like if you could have a conversation with that person, you know, like I've known a couple geniuses in my life, like certifiable geniuses. They, their brain doesn't work like yours and mine. They're, they, they don't talk like normal people. They don't think like normal people. They exist differently. So when you see someone online selling training who has seven CCIEs, but they're articulate and they're funny and they're easy to talk to, mm, maybe, maybe, I don't know. So that's, that's number one. You're going to fail. So let's just get that out of the way. That was my expectation. Everyone who knew I was doing the test, I told them over and over again, look, they'd be like, oh, good luck, Jeremiah. You're going to do it. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to fail. And that's not negative talk. That's reality. Okay. So that's my first tip. Just know you're going to fail. So let's um, come back over uh, no surprises. Can someone describe the check-in process? Okay, check-in process. Describe check-in process. Uh, now, I did this in Richardson. I assume it's going to be somewhat similar wherever you go. Um, you know, the only one that's probably going to be very different would be the mobile labs. But even then, it's probably going to be similar. Uh, I flew out. So I live in Ohio. I flew to Texas on Sunday. Uh, Monday was a down day. I just chilled. I didn't do anything. Uh, and the whole, that was intentional. I just wanted to be, cause I knew I wasn't going to sleep and I didn't. So I wanted to be as rested as possible. So I just sat around and did nothing in the hotel room all day. Monday, Tuesday morning, got up, drove the five minutes to the, uh, the Cisco building in Richardson, uh, walked to the front door, it was, I'm, I'm going to be specific because he, he wants like details. So it was locked, like magnetically locked. I jiggled it a couple times. The receptionist who was right there saw me, buzzed me in. I went in. She said, are you here for a test? I said, yes. She said, okay, I need your passport and your driver's license. Uh, so you need two forms of photo ID. This is in the, when you sign up, this is all in the details, or it's on the Cisco website already without signing up, I forget. Um, but I didn't actually know that. I, someone mentioned it. So I knew to bring passport, two forms of photo ID. Um, she took that from all the candidates, and then she checked us in while me and uh, I think I was the second one there. A couple other guys showed up. So there's five of us total that day. Uh, we just sat down in the lobby and mostly sat in silence, chatted a little bit. Uh, there was, with me, there was one guy, he was there for his fourth CCIE. Um, he was working on, I think he, he was doing Enterprise. He already had three other CCIEs. There was a guy there, it was his second attempt at Data Center. There was a guy there, it was his second attempt at Security. And there was another guy there. It was, I don't know what attempt it was. Um, he was from Mexico. I don't think his English was super great. So he, he really wasn't very talkative. Um, but so I don't know what attempt it was, but he was doing security. So uh, the one guy was from Pac the four CCA guy, thir or third working on his fourth was from Pakistan. Uh, the other guy was, uh, shoot, I don't want to misrepresent him. I think he was from India, but he was, he was actually living local. Uh, in Dallas, but he uh, was from any, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, one guy from Florida, the guy from Mexico, and me from Ohio. So that was our little group. Uh, we sat there. I got there like right at 8 o'clock or 5 after 8. I went inside the building, and uh, she checked us in. Uh, there was a little bit of a thing because this group of people from, I think they were from the Air Force. Uh, there was like maybe eight of them. Uh, they showed up for some kind of like specialized training Something with DWDM and something, I don't know. Um, and uh, they, were, they were a little rude. I just got to be going to be straight. Like they were like, yeah, we're super important. And so she, she stopped checking us in and was trying to check them in. But they, whatever, I, it, was, it was a little thing. So, um, 
so yeah, it was, it was just a little annoying. The proctor showed up, like, right, I don't know, right at 8.30 or something, right around then. Um, he had us all fill out a little, he, he called us up one at a time to the, to the receptionist desk, gave us back our IDs, said, here, I need you to read this and fill it out. And it was the lunch menu. So the lunch was provided by, uh, what's it called? Jason's Deli. It's a chain. And, uh, like you had a, you know, turkey sandwich. I don't know what it was. Turkey, roast beef, whatever. I don't know whatever it was. I got the turkey wrap. Um, so you just tick the, the lunch you want. That's it. Once everybody had got their IDs back and everything, he said, okay, come with me. Uh, we walk a little ways through the building, not very far past the little, uh, employee lunch area down a hallway. Uh, there's a couple meeting rooms or classrooms, something like that. We go into the one room and there was, uh, I think three rows of, back-to-back workstations. So there's probably like one, two, three, six, uh, say like maybe 12 workstations in the room, if I'm thinking it right. I think like 12 or something like that. Um, we were, Everybody was like a little bit spread out. So no one was right on top of each other. As far as, um, oh, let me, I'm kind of getting, getting, all right, describe the check-in process. What kind of chair do you sit down? It was a pretty cheap, office chair uh the arm had armrests they kind of they went up and down other than that you're just standard tall back office you know cheapo office chair computer chair i don't know how else to describe it um do you have a lot of desk space uh i would say pretty standard cube with desk space it's pretty similar to my desk that i have here which is what uh maybe maybe 36 inches three feet uh, whatever that is in centimeters. Um, so yeah, pretty standard, two and a half, three feet. I don't know. You know, I'm a big guy, so plenty, plenty of space. I did not feel at all crowded. Uh, how many monitors? You have two monitors. What type of keyboard? I will tell you because someone told me, and it was a great investment. It is the Logitech K120. Logitech K120. Uh, someone told me. I immediately bought one. It's a cheap keyboard. Uh, it's not bad. I'm a bit of a keyboard snob. I like fancy mechanical keyboards. Um, I asked my wife to get me a Buckling Spring uh, <laughs> IBM M1 knockoff Buckling Spring keyboard for my birthday. Like I like I like really nice keyboards. This is a cheapo keyboard, uh, but it's fine. It, you know, once you get used to it, perfectly fine. The mouse, it was it was the bottom barrel cheapo Dell mouse, you know, Wh- whatever like comes with everything. You can get one of them on Amazon for probably three dollars. It was cheap. It felt cheap in the hand. It worked. Now, I will say that someone uh, a couple people had warned me about this, that the the mouse is really fast. Boom, boom, boom. And I looked, I couldn't figure out how to change the mouse speed. You're working at a Linux desktop and I, I, I just couldn't figure out how to do it. I couldn't, someone, I have since, just since, since I got home, I heard someone say that there's a shortcut on the desktop. Now, when you sit down, like you're in the interface, it's a web interface and initially I was, af- I didn't want to like close anything or do anything because I didn't want to mess anything up. So I didn't even know that I could go to the desktop. Uh, in next time, uh, supposedly there's a shortcut on the desktop specifically for the mouse. I can't verify this. I didn't see it. But supposedly it's there. And that's one thing you're probably going to want to do because that mouse did throw me off. It's, it's a cheap mouse, whatever. I adapted to that pretty quick. But it's so quick and you do so much copying and pasting that, that I had several times that I was messed up. How many monitors do you have? What type of keyboard and mouse? Cisco provides. There you go. What type of uh, resources are available to you uh, when you start the test, i.e. documentation available? Now, okay, so at the most recent Cisco Live, there was a presentation. If you go to the Cisco Live YouTube channel, um, you'll, you should be able to find it. But they are specifically talking about the testing environment. 
It's like a half hour video where they specifically talk about the testing environment. I would recommend taking a look at that. Also, when you're ready, I would recommend, as someone else mentioned in the, um, the um, Reddit in response to your post, um, I would recommend uh, doing at least one of the Cisco labs. Uh, it is the same environment that you use on the exam. So it's all web-based, it's tabs and stuff. It's kind of hard to describe. Um, it, there's, there was nothing, I actually kind of liked it. I thought it worked pretty well. The only thing that was an issue was it, it, everything is right-click, copy, right-click, paste. Uh, so if you're like me, you're used to highlight to copy, right-click to paste. No, it's right-click, copy, right-click, paste. So it's that's gonna so in fact I'm gonna I haven't done it yet because I'm taking a couple days off but um, I'm gonna change my setup so that I, I can no longer highlight to copy I think I can do this in secure CRT uh, I'm gonna make everything or I'm just gonna do it right click copy right click paste um, that definitely kind of threw me off just a little bit the other thing I've kind of gotten used to in secure CRT when I right click to paste if it's more than one line the window pops up and you can kind of verify which has saved my butt while labbing because you know you're like you got 15 different tabs open and sometimes you you know paste onto the wrong device. Um, that's not an option. When you right click paste, boom, it just pastes it. You don't see what you're pasting. So you gotta be you gotta be take your time, be a little extra careful with that. Um, okay, resources. Sorry. So as f in terms of resources in the environment there was three external links um one was to python documentation one was to uh i think all three were for python or or um uh programmability tools i forget what the one uh I f yeah two one was one was python documentation one was a specific what's it called i didn't i've never used it um, I'm going to have to learn it at some point, but it's, it's like net something. It's a, it's a library for Python that a lot of people use for specifically for like network management. Um, but it wasn't necessary for the exam. So I never looked at it. Uh, you are supposedly, I've always heard you're, you, there is the documentation CD, which is no longer a CD that it's simply the, the Cisco website in, in a pared down version, you only have access to certain things. The search function is disabled. Um, I heard that that was an option. I, I briefly looked for it during the exam. Um, I could not figure out how to access it. Maybe it was listed in the fine print somewhere Then I was just skimming it. I got to say, you know, I didn't sleep the night before. I was, I wasn't, I won't say I was a, a mess, but I was, anxious i was tired i had a pounding headache the entire time nothing was ideal about it um and i will talk more about this i think you asked about it but i was so pressed for time that even stopping to look for documentation it wasn't an option i just didn't feel like it was an option so in terms of um what resources are available that i don't know I sat there for a thing and, and, but I will say that at no point did I feel like, oh, I wish I could look this up. Actually, that's not true. When I, I was doing um, guest shell and I couldn't remember, I was like, I was trying to do the command and I'm like, it's not working. It's not working. And I was like, shoot, did I forget how to do that guest shell? And then I realized I was in the interface configuration mode and the command wouldn't work there. I had to, I had to exit out of interface before would let me do the command and then but I wasted like a good minute like that's when I started looking for the documentation I'm like crap I, I how, do, how have I forgotten this and I hadn't forgotten it I just um, was one level too deep in the um, in the in the uh, config um, so okay so that's that um, yeah I wish I had I, w I wish I could tell you for sure about the uh, the documentation CD, but whatever. Uh, when you start the test, is documentation available? Okay, what does your proctor do? Okay, I got to tell you. So I talked to a bunch of guys, or I overheard conver overheard conversations on like router gods, 
where they were they were talking about oh like hey my proctor's name was this we had a great conversation and blah 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 my proctor barely spoke he told me to fill out the lunch form said okay guys follow me uh there's where the restroom is if you want to if you want to get water or something to eat here's the the lunch room um he hung up a badge on a whiteboard in the in the in the uh, in the room, and said, "If you need to use the restroom or go out, please uh, use this badge." It, um, and then he told me what what seat I was at, number two. That was it. He never said another word. He did not sit with us at lunch. He he was actually in a separate room, working on something else, and I got to say, for probably half the exam, he wasn't even there. He was the, the, he was off. He was, I don't know where he, he would just disappear. I mean, I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to do work. Um, but he, there was big chunks of time where he, he wasn't even in the room. So, um, in terms of like, are they sitting super close while you work? Not this guy. He was nowhere, nowhere near. Uh, one of the candidates went up and asked him questions probably like five or six times. The only person who actually went and asked him questions, um, so, you know, he, I don't know what their interaction was about or whatever. He seemed to be genuinely trying to help when that happened. But otherwise, um, he was uh, just perfectly quiet, off in a separate, like, room within the room that we were in. I don't know how to describe it other than that. Uh, what is lunch break like? Okay, so the way that this is set up is it's it starts at... 9? 8.30? 9? I don't know. Whenever it started, 9. It was right about 9. You have three hours. Then you do lunch. So those three, the first section, the design section, um, is three hours long. Once you complete design, you can then choose to start the do section. The module. So module one is design. That is the multiple choice, the standard computer-based uh, testing that we're all used to. It's a little bit different in that there's so many, like tons of exhibits, uh, not which is not a normal Cisco test. This one, there's like this whole story that you're playing through. It, it, whatever. I'll, I'll talk, I think you ask about it. Um, so you have three hours for that. That time does not carry over. So it only took me one hour to complete design. And so I had two hours left. I could have chosen, I don't know why I would. Oh goodness, excuse me. I could have chosen to just sit there for two hours and then start do, I don't know why you would after lunch. But um, you know, once my hour was up, I ended the module one started module two and then the five hour countdown for module two begins at lunchtime the proctor says okay guys time for lunch and then a second later my screen froze and it said like lunch break or i don't know what it said but it said the I think it said like the exam has been paused something like that so at that point you can't do anything uh we all sat down ate lunch chatted a little bit uh i think we our total lunch break was about 20 minutes. That was about all. Maybe it was a half hour. I, I felt like it was like 20 minutes, though. And um, and then it was right back. He was like, okay, guys, uh, break's over. Get back to work. So we all sat back down, and then the interface unpaused. Now, I will say that this was my experience, and I've talked to several other guys who've had this experience, that after lunch, stuff that had been working stopped working and i've i've read whole threads of people like talking like this is some big conspiracy by cisco to mess you up just like in the old days um no i think it's an artifact of of the system pausing all that i did i knew that this was a possibility so i made sure every step along the way i was saving all of my configs constantly saving my configs right before lunch you know i, I knew lunch was coming up because we had, we knew exactly when it was going to be. Um, so I went through, made sure everything was saved. When I came back from lunch, sure enough, something wasn't working. And I was like, holy fudge, what's going on? 
But I was like, okay, I knew this was a cha- possibility. All I did was reboot the couple of devices that were acting up. Everything started working again. So that's my tip for that. Uh, okay, so yeah, lo- uh, what is the lunch break like? That's it. We just in we stayed in the room. Uh, I didn't even he- like maybe I heard him bringing it in. Like you're you're pretty focused. Um, oh, did I answer how many monitors do you have? You have two monitors. Two, actually, it felt real similar to what I have now. I think these are 23 inch. So probably somewhere around there. Two, two monitors. Um, so that's, yeah, there's, there's lunch. We, we, we were in, we stayed in the room. I'm not sure that's the case for everybody. I've also heard that depending on the location, some locations, um, you eat at your desk. There's no more socializing. Uh, and I've heard that you can just skip lunch altogether in those locations. I don't know if that's true. Um, what is lunch break like? How long do you get between phases? Okay, so that's what I kind of already covered that. You have three hours for module one design. You have five hours for module two do. And if there's t- if you finish module one early, you can relax i don't know how you could relax (laughs) Uh, but you could if you wanted to you could just sit there and do nothing until the clock runs out and then start do but you cannot carry that time over you have exactly a maximum of three hours for module one a maximum of five hours for module two (coughs) all right uh stress management tips to get through the exam my biggest tip having taken it only once and I was stressed out, is know that you're going to fail, accept that, and use your first attempt as like exactly all the stuff you're asking here. I, I, t- I got to tell you, I came home and I was expecting, even though I knew I was going to fail, I was expecting to be emotionally devastated. And I kind of was like, I left the, f- the, I left the testing center. I was pretty sure I failed. I was, I was pretty sure, but I still had some hope that maybe I just eked it out. Maybe I eked it out. I got my results around 10 o'clock that night. I was already in bed. A friend texted me to ask how things went. So I looked at my phone and I saw I had an email from Cisco. I opened it up and it confirmed that I failed and I'd actually done worse than I expected. So after after seeing that, I, I I, I did not sleep at all that night. So the, the plane ride home, it was a rough, it was, I was exhausted by the time I got home because it was basically two nights in a row without any real sleep. Um, so yeah, so, but as soon as I got home and I started thinking like, okay, what's next? Um, I, I just don't, I don't feel that bad as much as I thought I would. I don't feel that bad because like, It's like, okay, I've seen the exam. I know what's on the exam. I I have a rough idea of where I need to focus, things I need to study. All the mystery, uh, mystique around it has been removed. So, yeah, I just feel better. So that's that's my only big thing is like, you know, as much as you can, try to sleep. Um, You're allowed to bring water. Like I brought a couple five-hour energies. Uh, A couple other guys had, I think one other guy had like an energy drink or something. Uh, I brought a couple protein bars just in case I got hungry. I, I didn't. Lunch was fine. I had I, I saved the caffeine until after lunch just to kind of make sure I kept going. So I didn't have any caffeine in the morning even though I was exhausted. Because for me, taking caffeine in the morning, it once you crash, it, even with more caffeine, it's, it's just like, anyway, whatever. I have heard a lot of candidates say that on their passing attempt, they took a long time to go back and validate your work. Okay, here's the thing. And this is why I say you, ha- you expect to fail. Okay, this test is so complex. The, this, <sighs> the tasks themselves aren't too bad. Like, at no point did I feel like, that's impossible, I have no idea what to do. But by the time you read through it, think like, okay, um, all right, how do I do this? And then this, okay, so this requirement, well, that kind of changes how I did this require this, you know, this requirement in the task. And then I got to make this work. So it's like, you can't just go step by step. 
because different things affect other things. So you got to kind of read it, take a holistic view, figure out how you're going to accomplish what they're asking. For some of the tasks, it was, it was super easy. Like, oh, yeah, no problem. Other tasks, it's like, oh, wait, okay, so you want... You want the routes to go like, what? And this, this router needs to do that. And this router, holy crap, how do I do that? Like, um, so by the time you read it, think about it and type it all out, put it in. Oh shit, I made a mistake. Why is this not working? Oh, going through the config. Oh, there it is. I'm such an idiot. Fix, fix, fix. Um, there was two tasks that I didn't even do. One of them I didn't do on, on accident. It was a, it was stupid. I was so pissed at myself. Um, I didn't, I didn't realize it till it was too late. It was something really simple, but I was like, I was out of time, just completely out of time. Um, another task I purposefully skipped because I knew I did, I just wasn't going to have time to do it. It was too involved. And even though I, I think I knew how to, what, how to do it, it was going to take like 20 minutes and I had three. So at that point I just went back and checked a couple of the other tasks that I, I had already completed to make sure that they, but so that's, that's coming. The first time through, you were so many guys. In fact, two of the guys that I talked to during my exam had run out of time on their first attempts. So I ran out of time on my first attempt. Like, it's, there's so much that you have to see it. You have to come home and lab it up as best as you can remember. And in fact, I kind of am kicking myself because someone told me this strategy and after the fact, I was like, shit, I, I probably should have done that. And that was basically this. Like, you know you're going to fail. So what they did was they spent their time memorizing the tasks as best they could. They ran out to their car when the test was over, and they wrote everything down that they could remember from the design and the do. And I was like, shit, I should have done that. Because quite frankly, I, sp I was so stressed trying to do stuff up until like the I, I 100% ran out of time. I was like, keyboard stopped working. Your time's up. Um, like, and I there's, I don't remember a lot. And I feel like, fuck, I don't remember so much. If I just spent the time memorizing, I knew I was going to fail. Why didn't I just try to memorize everything? So I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you obviously you have to validate. That's how they grade, right? They grade... They're not going to look at your config because there's, for all the tasks, there's going to be a couple different ways of doing. It. In fact, in that CCI or that uh, Cisco Live presentation that I mentioned, um, the guy, the pro the guy who's, who heads up the program now, he he specifically says this. He's like, "Listen, we try to limit how you can do something. We try to like guide you into doing it a specific way based on the the constraints of the task. But even then." There's almost always multiple ways to achieve something. So they grade almost entirely on scripts, like they run scripts against your thing. I'm sure they have to look at some stuff, but it's mostly run by scripts. And they're looking at the results. What does the routing table look like? Where are the pings at? You know, that's what they're looking at from what I understand. Um, so... Yeah, you, you, you need to be validating as you go. And quite frankly, something that, that in that presentation, he says that they try to make each task stand alone as much as possible. But I got to tell you, no, not for the, at least not for the enterprise um, infrastructure, inter enterprise infrastructure exam. The test 100% builds on itself. There are a couple of tasks that are standalone-ish, but... There, you have to get everything working to to move to to move on. You might be able to to do the first five or six or eight tasks, even if it's wrong. But then you're going to get later on, and and something's not going to be working that you need working, which is honestly why I thought I did better than I did because everything was working, seemed to be working. Um. So, yeah, so validating that you, you have to go as fast as you can. You need to be validating as you go through. And then if you have time, I think then you need to go back. But again, I have only taken it once and I failed. So uh, this might not be my. Um, can someone who's passed uh, explain exactly what that means? 
Uh, are you double checking your con see this uh, honestly the, this I'm s I'm sorry but this question is kind of confusing to me. Um Yeah, of course you have to check what you're doing. Like they're asking you to achieve certain things. So you have to verify that it's that it's that you've achieved it, you know. So I'm a little confused at the question. Yes, of course you have to validate it. Um now there was like, at at some point in the exam, I was like, okay, I'm out of time. I'm I'm barely if I finish, I'm barely going to finish. So I just started. When I got to the software defined portion, I didn't check anything. I just pumped out the config as fast as I could, and moved on. So n not surprisingly, that was the section I scored the worst on. Not because I found it particularly challenging, but because I probably made a bunch of little mistakes because I was rushing, 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 and I didn't have time to check anything. Um, how much time should you spend on each question? That's not really a valid question, only because each question is completely different. Like, there was one task where I was literally... I, 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 I want to be real careful not to break any kind of NDA. Like, I do not want to get in trouble. I want this CCIE. Um, but you're just... I mean, there's one task you're like, you're setting up IPv6 on a couple of interfaces. Like, it took two minutes, you know? There's another task that's this involved MPLS stuff with different sites and routing and routes need to go here but not there and here but not there and this route and that route. And I probably spent a uh, half hour on that one. So, yeah, there's no definitive, definitive for that. Uh, do you have a whiteboard available? No, you have one sheet of paper and a pen. A blue pen and one sheet of paper. I had heard that you have a whiteboard, and I was really glad to see that it was not a whiteboard. I hate trying to do take notes on a whiteboard. Uh, the only thing I wrote down, like five little things on there. I I I didn't I didn't see need for it. Didn't see need for it. You have a text editor, um, so if you want to keep separate notes, you probably just want to throw it up in the text editor. Uh, there's a couple things where it's just easy, faster for me just to jot it down. Uh, should I take my time to try to answer the questions or try to answer the questions as quickly as possible? So again, this all goes back to what I keep repeating. You're going to fail the first time. So you, got, you have to consider your first attempt as pretty much reconnaissance. You're going through, you're trying to figure out what is it that they're asking? What do I need to know? What do I not need to know? Just as important. Um, what are the tasks like? So for the design portion, you have three hours and that is a lot of time. It's, uh, it, it was like, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure what I can and can't say. It wasn't that many questions. Um, so again, I read every single exhibit. So in case you're not aware, as you go through the design, it's this whole story, right? So with each new question, New diagrams appear, emails appear, some text uh, messages, exchanges appear. Um, I think that's everything, like emails, texts, diagrams, some emails with diagrams, some separate <laughs> diagrams. Um, I read every single one. You have a little highlighting tool uh, that you can highlight stuff in the exhibit. So like I went through and highlight. So I took my time. I did not rush. It took me one hour. It took me one hour to get through that. I, I failed it, but it took me one hour to get through that portion. So you have three hours for design. You really do have all the time in the world. Oh, oh I forgot to say this. Um, from what that Cisco presentation, the Cisco Live presentation, the guy did say you do not have access to any documentation um, during that portion. The same Python documentation links were there, but again, I never found the link for the Cisco S Cisco documentation, unless it's called something weird and I just didn't realize what I was looking at. Um, but I'm pretty sure he said, during design, you do not have access to the documentation. Do you do? But the design, it's like this story. You're, you know, they're building a network. You're advising them, oh, here, you know, 
like, hey, uh, I was wondering about this technology. I'm not sure. What do you think? And then, oh, then here's a, uh, you know, a, a, a table that you have to like, oh, here's the four different, you know, related technologies and which one has this feature and which one has this feature. Check, 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 check. Stuff like that. Uh, or multiple choice or whatever. So, uh, so for design, you can totally take your time. And in fact, th again, looking back, I was, I was kind of hoping that I would pass. I thought I did pretty good on design. I was actually surprised to see that I failed design. Um, I wish I had taken a little more time. Oh, but you cannot go back. You cannot go back. Once you hit next, it, it's gone to you. So I kind of wish I'd taken just a little bit more time to get the, get the questions in my head a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. I have a rough idea of some things that I was like stumped on that I definitely need to study before I go back. Um, how is the design phase of the exam? High level different from, uh, how is the design? Oh, and then again, oh, okay. And then as, uh, for the do portion, should you take your time and go as quickly as possible? Everything, you have to go as quickly as possible. There is no taking your time. There is no taking your time. You have to go as quickly as possible. You have to balance going as quickly as possible and getting it right. Which, again, in my opinion, the first time is almost impossible. There's just too much. Uh, when, I, when you go back the second time, you will have seen it. You will have you know, built it. Your lab, of course, I can't 100% mimic it at home. I don't remember all the details. But uh, as best as I can, I'm going to lab you know, up the, the problem so that even if I don't have the exact topology and all the, the stuff you know, exactly, the rough it's going to be roughly close enough that I should be able to like, oh, I know how to do that. I just need to like look to see what are the IPs, what are the interfaces, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, how is the design phase of the exam and the high level different from each other? I'm not sure what this means. How is the design phase of the exam in the and the high level? Um, if you mean like the, the design and the do... The design is a, is a pretty standard test, just like any Cisco test you've ever taken. The difference is all the exhibits. Uh, so m most of the questions are, uh, yeah, definitely most, almost all of the questions. You cannot read the question and answer it. You can't. You have to go into the exhibits to find the relevant information, the pertinent information to be able to answer the question. Because the question will be like, uh, based on Jason's email, What's the solution to his problem? You know, so like, well, I don't know. I gotta go read the email. So yeah, so that's that's it. And then the do portion, it's you get you have tasks. Um, it's I can tell you because I'm pretty sure this is common knowledge. It's broken down. Um, section one is sort of your traditional routing and switching. Section two is software defined, and section three is programmability. So. Um, yeah. Um, in section two, I had some problems with my V edges. I was having weird problems. I probably wasted a good 20 minutes, which really pisses me off. And ultimately, the solution was reboot the V edges. There, it wasn't a config issue. It wasn't a routing issue. It was something with the virtualization was messed up, and I just had to reboot it. But I wasted a good at least at least 15 minutes. And that really... And yes, I could have gone to the proctor and maybe, maybe got some of that time back. But, but that's a, uh, yeah. W the problem is what I've heard is that if you go to the proctor, half the time he's just going to be like, "Man, eh, you need to figure it out." And it's one of those things like, so the the default is like, "I need to figure it out." By the time I figured out that I I couldn't that it was a, like a virtualization problem, and rebooting was the solution. One, the problem had cleared up. So how do I show him? I can't show him the problem. If the problem's fixed. And then he's going to take my word that I wasted 20 minutes on it? Maybe. But I didn't try. And honestly, I, at, by that point, I already knew that I was not going to have enough time. So I wasn't too worried about it. <clears throat> but so the, the design portion is the standard questions, the do portion. You get a task. It's, it's uh, you know, a few paragraphs. Um, you know, accomplish this, accomplish this, accomplish this. Don't use this type of command. Don't use this type of thing. Make sure that this requirement is met, and you do it. The um, as far as the interface goes, I will say, 
it's pretty nice. It's actually pretty nice. It's uh, you have a um, a complete diagram, so you have a complete topology with all the devices, and you can click on any of them. Uh, that topology, there's no interfaces or IP addresses. You have in your resources, you have diagrams of like each site and um, close-ups that have interfaces and IP addresses. I trusted those. Um, it never occurred to me that they would lie in those, so hopefully they didn't. But everything seemed to work that I that I thought I should, you know, it seemed to work the way I thought it should, so I think that was fine. And then on, so I had it this monitor, this monitor. On this monitor I had my, I did all my configs. So basically on this monitor I had, the, you have the topology, which I never actually used, because you also have a sidebar with tabs for like all the sites. You expand the drop down, and then there's all the devices within that site. So you just you click on a device name, and then it pops up. The, the console pops up in front of you, and then that interface is tab. So you could have tons of devices open. And much like Secure CRK, you can send. You, there's a bottom bar where if you type in there and click send, it'll send the commands to all open devices. And I made I made use of that. That was nice to uh, save configs. And then, like, a couple things I wanted to, you know, like, show the routing table on everything or show the BGP config on everything, you know. So that was nice to do that. Saved a, you know, s just a few seconds here and there. Um, yeah, dude, I'm totally there with you. Like, I, I really struggle. Like, this is something that is, is, is like, a real problem for me in my life it's weird because on some ways i can like i have literally had to get on a plane fly across the country go to a strange customer meet with the board of directors for a multi-billion dollar company give a presentation no problem but going to like a new restaurant that i've heard has a strange ordering system I get so panicky because like I don't, well, I don't, I don't know. Like, what if I'm gonna look stupid or not know what to do? Like, it's it's weird. Like I, you know, so I kind, I totally anxiety of the unknown, man. Like I, I feel that. Um, you know, again, I hate to say this, uh, but you know, you kind of, you just gotta go with the expectation you're gonna fail, and that it's a reconnaissance mission. Everyone was perfectly nice. Uh. The Cisco office was just like any other office. In fact, it was a little disappointing because, you know, Cisco in my mind, I've been working on Cisco for 20 years. Like, it's this, you know, this big thing and to get to their office and just be like, oh, this just looks like any other office. It has drab carpeting like any other office. There's scuffs on the wall like any other office. It smells like a, a, in any other office, you know, <laughs> like there was just nothing magical about it. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to not answer. Is there something the question like the NDA thing? Yeah. So I, I did my best not to break any NDA stuff. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So I will say here, here's the, um, I, th uh, you don't, I don't think you, s you say when you're going, you don't say when you're going, uh, here. So here is something that, oh, this is what has been causing me anxiety since I got home. So, um, I failed. I knew I was going to fail. And my expectation was I would spend the new exam, Enterprise Infrastructure 1.1, comes out uh, September 20th or 22nd or something. So, I thought, okay, I will, uh, I'll fail. I'll come home. Maybe I'll pass. I didn't, but I thought maybe I would. But assuming I fail, I'll come home. Based on how it went, I'll schedule my next attempt in two or three months. I have three months exactly until the next version comes out. That's what I'm going to do. Well, enterprise infrastructure. Uh, so I can't schedule for 30 days. So that puts me at the end of July. August, September. There are no openings anywhere in the world. None. These seven in September are after the new exam rolls out. 
So I'm fucked. My plan was to take the same version one again. I can't. So my wife and I have been talking about it for the past couple of days. And the current plan, although she's not, she's still thinking about it because this is a big deal. Because I've been working on this for a while. But the current plan is I'm going to go at the beginning of October. It's going to be like the second week that the exam is available. I'm going to go back to Richardson, take the exam, and almost certainly fail again because it's a whole new exam. Then I will go in mid-December and hopefully pass. So I, I'm like, I'm kicking myself because I wish I had, I, I, you know, I had already booked everything by the time they made the announcement of the new exam. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I could have honestly practically done different, but um, that's the reality of it. So... So this is this is getting very expensive. Like in addition to all the training and everything, like it's you know with airfare, like the test itself was sixteen hundred bucks. Then you have airfare, hotel, uh, food, car. Like you know, each attempt is expensive. And now I was hoping for two. Like I, I, I was hoping for one, but I was realistically thinking two. And now it's going to be at least three. <sighs> so anyway. All right, look, this was a very long, but hey, you know, if you're someone with anxiety, hopefully I answered your questions and whatever. All right, man, uh, take it easy.